All right, hi everybody. I had to go to my car because toddlers, right? Okay, so we're gonna go back to videos. We actually had um, a whole bunch of people email me and um, and post comments and you know, on Facebook and Google Classroom and YouTube that they wanted the videos back. They missed them. So we are going to bring them back. So just like before, um, we're going to, I'm going to do my whole thing. There's going to be one, two, three questions maybe um, at the end. Today you only have two. And we post those answers in the comments below if you are on Facebook and YouTube or um, in Google Classroom. One comment for all of your answers. All right. Everybody understand? I'm just going to take your silence as an agreement. All right. So today we're going to talk about this amazing, cool lady um, named Elizabeth Blackwell. And so she was born in England in 1821. And then she moved to the United States with her family in 1832. So while she was there, she obviously made some new friends. She was a teacher. Her sister was a teacher. Her mother was a teacher. And um, one of her friends got very sick and very ill. And um, she was sitting there trying to help her when, you know, and to help take care of her. And they were talking and she said, man, this would be so much easier if I had a woman who was my doctor instead of, um, you know, just like the, the local town doctor who was obviously a male. And they were like, yeah, that would be nice. But that didn't exist because women can't be doctors. That's madness. Just sheer madness. So eventually her friend did pass away. And after that, Elizabeth was like, why can't I be a doctor? Or why can't any female be a doctor? That's ridiculous. You know what? I'm going to be a doctor. And so she tried. She applied to every single medical school that she could find. And probably, as you would expect, she was rejected from every single one on the basis of her gender. How dare a female try to be a doctor? However, they did suggest that she could be a fabulous nurse. So there's that. Nurse, fine. Doctor, absolutely not. So she got a hold of some friends from Philadelphia and she was like, hey, peeps, could you possibly help me try to get into medical school? Medical school? And they were like, no, we could try. And so they had some friends who were in New York and they were like, hey, we have this lady. She wants to be a doctor. Could you let her into your medical school? And the Geneva College was like, I guess. And so they sent her a joke or a letter and it was actually a joke. But Elizabeth was like, haha, jokes on you. I'm coming anyway, because you sent me a letter, so I'm gonna show up. So when she showed up, they were like, why are you here? And she was like, to be a doctor, obviously. So they were like, okay, you can stay, because they thought she wasn't gonna make it. Mm -mm -mm. All, all y'all know, when somebody gets determined, no matter what their gender, you can't put a stop to that. So. She was like, okay, I will stay and be a doctor. Thank you for accepting me. They didn't get it. She was like, I don't care that you think I'm a joke. I'm gonna do it anyway. And obviously you would think that she faced a whole bunch of discrimination and you would be right. They wouldn't let her complete labs. They made her sit separately because why would a woman and a man need to sit by each other when they're learning? That's crazy, we don't do that. So she had to sit by herself. She had to learn by herself, study by herself, do it all by herself uh, because they didn't want to help her in any way, shape or form because they didn't want their college to look bad for graduating a female. So, I, mm, no. so eventually she was like, ha ha, joke really was on you because in 1849, she graduated with her medical degree. Then she went back to those same friends who helped her um, get into medical school. And she was like, hey, I got my, like, my, I'm a doctor. What, what can I do to help out? And so they were like, hey, we have all of these women who can't afford to go to the doctor. Oh, could you help them? And she was like, Psh, yes, I can. And so that's what she did. She opened a medical clinic that specifically treated women who were poor. And then a little while later, her sister was like, well, if Elizabeth can do it, I can do it too, because you know, sisters, whatever. So that's exactly what she did. So her and her sister then went to New York and opened a clinic uh, for women and children. 
and then the Civil War broke out and they were like, whoops, that's bad. So then they decided to go train a whole bunch of nurses for Union hospitals. So there was as many medical staff um, personnel as we could get. So then, because why not keep going if you're going to be this like cool lady who's a doctor in the 1800s? In 1868, she went to New York and was like, you know what? I'm going to open a college so that no woman has to deal kind of what I dealt with. So um, she did. She went to New York and she opened um, a medical college that obviously accepted women. So she also helped found the National Health Society and she published a whole bunch of books. But the one that she's the most famous for is the one that's about her life. It's an autobiography and it is called The Pioneer Work of Opening the Medical Profession to Women in 1895 all right that was a long spiel it's not a, it's not a normal video but it's a little longer than normal all right here are your two questions all right one what on earth is she famous for I gave you her name but what is she the most famous for in the United States all right two how do you think people like Elizabeth Blackwell and her sister and countless people after her how do you think they impacted the medical field that one's just an opinion question I just want to see what you think how do you think people like her who was like haha jokes on you how do you think that they impacted the medical field all right so what is she famous for how did she impact the medical field answers go in the comments below one comment for both answers don't give me two comments because then I get a hundred trillion notifications all day and I start to twitch because it's like getting stuck in a really bad group text message and you know how that's that's awful don't do that to me okay all right so that's everything that's all we're gonna talk about so have fun don't forget to smile go and change the world and stay healthy Springfield